My name is Stefan Riker. I'm the editor of a poetry magazine called Smartish Pace. And the, uh, the reason we're here tonight is to have a reading for some of the poets who are in our new issue. It's number 19. It looks like this. And um, first, I want to thank the KGB for having us back. We're, uh, we're a magazine from Baltimore. And uh, they've let us come back here several times. And we're really grateful for that. And I want to thank specifically Chandler, who again set up tonight's reading, and Louie behind the bar, who's going to be serving all of us. Thanks to, to uh, Claire Banks of Smartish Pace. She's the other member here tonight. She'll be introducing the poets in the second half of the reading. So the way it's going to work is uh, we have nine poets reading tonight. They're each going to read for about five minutes. So we'll have five read. We'll take a, uh, a beverage break, and then we'll finish up with, with four more. So we've, we've done these readings. Each year we do these readings in like five, six, or seven cities. Uh, we just had one in like Raleigh, North Carolina a few weeks ago, and um, Chicago, and of course Baltimore. But this year was pretty amazing. So we had 11 poets um, sign up to read tonight initially. Unfortunately, Aaron Bells texted me that his uh, Jetta broke down in Tennessee. So if you came to see Aaron Bells, you're free to leave now. Um, and Richard Jackson also had to cancel. He had a family emergency. But the other sort of amazing thing is I don't think any of these poets are from New York City. Uh, and, and we are neither. So here we are. <laughs> All right. Oh, and I also have to thank Deb Schwartz. Oh, hey. President. She will take your pictures several times. But a lot of them will be out of focus, so don't worry. <laughs> the first poet reading tonight is Gregory Janikian. He directs the creative writing program at the University of Pennsylvania. He's the author of several books of poems, all from Carnegie Mellon Press. And his most recent is So I Will Till the Ground. And occasionally at Smartish Pace, when a poet doesn't seem to find us and send us their work, we'll, um, I will bug them until they send us work. And Gregory is one of those people that I've bugged, but he doesn't see it, but he's very generous. So I asked him for poems, I've been asking for poems for a little while, and he was very generous to send a great batch of poems, and uh, some of them are in the new issue of Smartish Pace. Gregory, your turn. I'm going to read, uh, start off uh, with a poem that appears in the issue. Uh, I should say that I was born in Alexandria, Egypt, of Armenian parentage, and came to the uh, United States when I was about eight years old. Uh, here's a poem called First Winter in America. Uh, you have to realize that I've never seen snow before. First Winter in America. I walked out into the January blizzard my breath froze into small clouds, and ice was hanging from the trees. The dunes were dreamy animals. I heard shovels striking music. White eyelashes, white mittens. I thought I could become whatever I touched. A year before, in another language, I held the desert in my hand. I tasted the iridescent sea. Now I stayed quiet, afraid I would never see it again. The sky shattered into a million pieces and falling around me. I watched my mother inside, walking back and forth in her heavy coat, and my sister rubbing her hands to make some kind of spark. I could imagine furnaces rumbling all over America, heat rising through the vents parching the air. And I stayed where I was, someplace I had no name for, not for the snow or my standing still and watching it fall, beautiful wreckage deepening with hardly a sound. Most of my uh, boyhood years in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is the home of the Little League, and much of my uh, notions of America were uh, introduced to me on the baseball fields. So this is a poem called How I Learned English. It was in an empty lot 
ringed by elm and fir and honeysuckle. Bill Corson was pitching in his buckskin jacket. Chuck Keller, fat even as a boy, was on first, his t-shirt riding up over his gut. Ron O'Neill, Jim Dennis were talking it up in the field, a blue sky above them tipped with cirrus. And there I was, just off the plane and plopped in the middle of Williamsport, PA, at a neighborhood game, unnatural and without any moves, my notions of baseball in America growing fuzzier each time I whiffed. So it was not impossible that I, banished to the outfield and daydreaming of water or a hotel in the mountains, would suddenly find myself in the path of a ball stung by Joe Barone. I watched it closing in, clean and untouched, transfixed by its easy arc before it hit my forehead with a thud. I fell back, dazed, clutching my brow, groaning, oh my shin, oh my shin. And everybody peeled away from me and dropped from laughter. And there we were, all of us writhing on the ground for one reason or another. <laughs> Someone said shin again. There was a wild stamping of hands on the ground, the kicking of feet, and the fit of laughter overtook me too. And that was important, as important as Joe Barone asking me how I was through his tears, picking me up and dusting me off with hands like swatters. And though my head felt heavy, I played on till dusk, missing flies and pop-ups and grounders, and calling out in desperation things like, yours, and take it, but doing all right, <laughs> tugging at my cap in just the right way, crouching low, my feet set, hum baby sweetly on my lips. about language, uh, and it's about my family and how they mix up idiomatic expressions in English, and it's called uh, Immigrant Picnic. It's the 4th of July, the flags are painting the town, the plastic forks and knives are laid out like a parade, and I'm grilling. I've got my apron, I've got potato salad, macaroni, relish, I've got a hat shaped like the state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> I ask my father what's his pleasure, and he says, hot dog, medium rare. And then, hamburger, <laughs> sure, what's the big difference? As if he's really asking. I put on hamburgers and hot dogs, slice up the sour pickles and Bermudas, uncap the condiments. The paper napkins are fluttering away like lost messages. You're running around, my mother says like a chicken with its head loose. <laughs> Ma, I say, you mean cut off. Loose and cut off being as far apart as, say, son and daughter. She gives me a quizzical look as though I've been caught in some impropriety. I love you and your sister just the same, she said. <laughs> sure, my grandmother pipes in. You're both our children, so why worry? <laughs> That's not the point, I begin telling them, and I'm comparing words to fish now like the ones in the sea at Port Said, or like birds among the date palms by the Nile, unrepentantly elusive, wild. Sonia, my father says to my mother, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> He's on a ball, my mother says. <laughs> That's roll, I say, throwing up my hands, as in hot dog, hamburger, dinner roll. And what about roll out the barrels, my mother asks. And my father claps his hands. Why, sure, he says, let's have some fun. And launches into a polka, twirling my mother around and around like the happiest top. And my uncle is shaking his head, saying, you could grow nuts listening to us. And I'm thinking of pistachios in the Sinai, burgeoning without end, pecans in the south, the jumbled flavor of them suddenly in my mouth, wordless, confusing, crowding out everything else. 